As trail camera owners and users, I don't think there's anything more frustrating than having to go through or sort through thousands of false trigger events. It's a giant waste of time. It's frustrating. You lose time while you're sitting there going through those photos. And then it's also frustrating knowing that your camera's out there basically not doing anything but eating batteries and SD card space. It's not doing anything for you. It's not collecting any data. So what can we do to eliminate false triggers? Before we get into how to eliminate the problem. We have to recognize and understand how trail cameras actually work. We have a full, very technical, detailed article on this. We're not gonna go that deep into it. If you wanna check that article out, it'll be linked in the description of this video. Surface level here, trail cameras are triggered by their PIR sensor. The PIR sensor monitors the infrared radiation of the environment. When there's change, the camera's triggered. So a lot of people think that you know these cameras are motion, they're triggered by motion, or they're triggered, triggered by heat. But in reality, it is a combination of the two in regards to the infrared radiation of the static environment and the dynamic environment. So when we start thinking about causes of false triggers, I think we all know weeds, grass, things you know, blowing around those objects in front of the camera are going to cause false triggers. But I think that there's some people, and maybe a lot of people, that maybe have ran into an issue where regardless of where they set their camera, it takes false triggers. And that scenario is gonna represent an actual hardware malfunction. Now, I think most of the time when people have a lot of false triggers, more than likely it's their setup, the way they have the camera set up. But you do have the occasional hardware failure, which we call basically a burned out or a runaway PIR. So when an element burns out, the two elements on a dual element sensor are always gonna have separate readings. That is gonna make force the camera to take a picture because it thinks there's change there. So a telling sign is if you have a camera set up to a five second trigger delay and you get a picture every five seconds, you know that you could have a hardware problem. Now an easy way to test that at home is just to remove the camera from the field, stick good batteries, new batteries in it, format your SD card so it's completely empty and just stick that camera in photo mode, one shot burst, five second delay, 10 second delay, doesn't really matter but stick it in a cabinet and let it run for a few hours. When you go and retrieve that card, you should have maybe a picture when you place the camera in the cabinet and maybe one when you remove it from the cabinet. If the camera continues to take picture after picture after picture, you know that camera's toast. It needs to be warranted, serviced, replaced, thrown away, whatever the case is, but you know you have a bad camera. On the environmental side, we have those objects that, you know, we all know, grass, branches, leaves, those objects moving causing false triggers, but it's not movement alone. It's movement in relation to infrared radiation change. So what the heck did that, does that mean? And to keep it simple, it's the sun. So when the sun hits an object, it, the temperature changes. Or when the sun leaves an object, that temperature changes. When that object that has a changing temperature, when it moves, it's going to trigger your camera. There's a difference there in the IR radiation that is gonna cause that camera to take a photo. So how do we prevent that? During the summer months, it, this problem is much more apparent when the sun is high over your head. You never will be able to completely eliminate it, but just avoiding harsh, harsh lighting contrasts, kind of like what I'm in now. You can see these pockets of sunshine behind me. I have this render set up, and then on the back side, I have this clear cut here. This is not an ideal setup. We have these pockets of sun beating down, and on these leaves, on these branches, bring green up, and when we have a slight breeze, those objects move, camera's gonna be triggered. So. Just avoiding harsh lighting conditions is going to help. Um, it does, not only helps false trigger events, but it's also going to help with photo quality and video quality.